welcome to Sanford Flip Math. This is pre-calculus. We are working through the Demand and Weights Foley Kennedy book, uh, fourth or fifth edition. And we are in the chapter for exponent, exponents and logs, uh, logarithms, and uh, specifically now working with logarithms. And this is uh, probably our third or fourth video, third, third video on logarithms. And specifically today, we're gonna work on properties of logs. Before we do that, just a quick reminder, uh, Probably my my mainstay phrase for this is uh, to remind you that logs are exponents and they act like exponents and the rules that we're going to learn today are like the rules for exponents. So just a reminder, you know, here here's the exponent, here's the exponent. So the answer to the log is an exponent. So every time you see the result from a log, it's an exponent. Okay, so with that in mind, we're going to do a little playing around with multiplying and dividing with exponents. So just a little reminder that, you know, when you have something like x squared times x to the third, you're, when you're multiplying things with like bases, you add exponents. And so this would be x to the fifth. And, and the reason for that is, you know, it's x times x times x times x times x. So that's five of them, x to the fifth. So we have that little property that says that when you're multiplying with like bases, you can add exponents. Well, I want to show you a numerical example for that same kind of thing if we were talking about in log form. So for instance, if I was going to look at, say, the log base 3 of 243. Well, 243, it's kind of a big, ugly number to be working with. Uh, but what I want to kind of point out is this is the same thing as 3 to the third times 3 squared. Okay, so just take a look at that. Okay, so now you're probably saying to yourself, you know, if we already know what's going on here, couldn't we just write this three to the fifth? And then, so the question is, what law, uh, when we're doing a log, what is the exponent that three is raised to? Well, you can clearly see that three is being raised to the fifth power, so the answer to this ought to be five. Well, what I want to do is I want a way to break this up. I want a way to look at the three cubed and the three squared separately. So if I do something like log base three of three to the third and log base three of three squared, what would I do with them separately to still get that five? Well, log base three of three to the third is three. Log base three of three squared is two. And what would you do with three and two to get five? Well, I guess you'd have to add them. And now what I'm trying to do is give you a background for why the rule is what it is. Now remember logs are exponents. So the, here's what the rule looks like. If you have two things being multiplied, then you can break that up into two separate logs, a separate log for each. It's, it's like distributing, but it's not distributing. This is multiplication and this is addition. And that is the sum identity or the product identity. Uh, I guess we would call it a product uh, rule or product uh, formula for logs. So again, the, what I'm going back to that same phrase I'm going to use over and over and over again. What are logs? Logs are exponents. And if, if they are exponents, they act like exponents. So when you are multiplying, you're adding exponents, and logs are exponents. So here we are adding exponents, okay? So what's that gonna look like? Okay, well, one way it could look is, let's say I have something like this. So I wanna do the log base three of nine, of three X, excuse me. I, I can't really do anything for real with that, but I could break it up and simplify it a little bit. So I could do log base three of three plus log base three of x, when I do that, log base 3 of 3, I can actually do that log. 3 to what power is 3? So it, it lets me simplify it a little bit. Where this got used most of the time was probably about 40 years ago doing big time multiplication and division. Uh, numbers would be converted into logs and then added and then converted back 
and we don't really do that so much now because we have technology, but we can still use this for uh, simplifying formulas and things like that. So that, that's where this gets used quite a bit. All right, similarly, what if I had uh, the log um, of, let's say, uh, x divided by y? Okay, so log base 10, I guess. Well, subtraction, well, I'm sorry, let, let me back up. I kind of gave it away already, sorry. Uh, when you multiply with like bases, you add exponents, right? When you multiply with like bases, you add exponents. Well, in the same way, when you divide with like bases, you subtract exponents. So the short version is this would end up being something like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, write out the, the format uh, that you're going to see in the in just in the listing of formulas. So log base b of m minus log base b of n. And this is the quotient rule, the quotient uh, formula quotient because it's dividing. Okay. All right. So those those two rules are also listed up here, and you're going to see them on the pages that follow. Just so they're going to be in front of you. Now, what I'd like to do is just take a minute to uh, uh, do a little bit of expanding just to kind of see how this is going to go. Okay. So for instance, I might have a log base five of x, y. Now, the instructions are going to say something like rewrite as the summer difference of simple logarithms. So we want to break this up. My short version instructions are going to be expand. Okay. So this is going to be, if you are multiplying things with like bases, you are adding exponents. Logs are exponents. So this is just going to be the log base 5 of x plus log base 5 of y. That's it. We're done. What if it was log base 5 of x squared? Well, if that's true, then it's going to be log base 5 of x times x. Isn't that the same thing? Log base 5 of x times x is log base 5 of x squared. Well, that doesn't really expand it. But I can now do log base 5 of x plus log base 5 of x. That could be done. Now, I will tell you that we can be a little clever since this is log base 5 of x plus another one. Isn't that two of them? Which is actually going to lead me into a whole different rule. Okay, so let me pop back. What we just did was we said log base 5 of x squared was really 2 times log base 5 of x. Well, what I want to do is remind you of the power to power rule. So like if I have x squared to the third, technically what this cubed means is three of those. And if I go ahead and add exponents, two plus two plus two, this is going to be x to the sixth. Now I, I know I said add because I made this into multiplication. But really what happened, if I go back to the original problem, was I multiplied the exponents. Whenever you do power to a power, you multiply exponents. Okay. Now, I want to make a connection to what we saw here a second ago. This 2 is an exponent. Now, the idea is there's 5 to some mystery power. And that gives me x. And then that power, or that thing, is being raised to the second power. So the idea is that I have power to a power, I would be multiplying exponents. Well, 2 is the one exponent. And then the ex other exponent is the log base 5 of x. So really what's going on here is, in terms of the math involved, when I do a power to a power, I'm multiplying exponents. 2 was an exponent, log base 5 is an exponent, because logs are exponents, I'm multiplying. Okay, in terms of practice, what really happens? Well, it's like you snatch that exponent off and bring it out in front. Okay, so let's just see a couple quick examples. 
log base uh, 3 of 10 to the fifth is the same thing as 5 log base 3 of 10. So that's a quicker way to handle things like x squared. Can you imagine? I mean, you could do this log base 3 of 10 plus log base 3 of 10 plus log base 3 of 10, because there are five of them, right? So th this is already old, right? I'm hoping you're not writing all this down. I just want you to see it. So I got one, two, three, four, five of them. And if I add all those up, all I can do is combine like terms and say, hey, look, there are five of them. Okay. All right. So how does that play into what we're going to be doing? Well, in terms of expanding, it opens up a whole new world. Okay, so for instance, let's say I have log base uh, 7 of x to the third y squared. Well, really I have a couple of things to do. First, I'm going to deal with this multiplication. If you are multiplying things with like bases, you are adding exponents. And then... The idea is power to a power. Basically, this exponent gets peeled off and brought to the front. Oops, sorry, I missed the three. Oops, so quick. All right, and then log base 7 of x plus 2 log base 7 of y. And that's done. Okay? The inside of the log doesn't have anything except a single thing. I can't do anything else to it. This is expanded. Okay, let's do one more of these, and then uh, we got to go backwards. Okay, let's do, uh, no, I'm going to change up. I know you're probably mad at me because you were already writing. Sorry. Natural log of, let's do x to the third over y. Uh, let's do square root of y. Ooh, you're going to love this. Okay, probably not, but that's okay. All right, so if I'm dividing, that's subtracting exponents. Okay, so I'm going to do ln of the top minus ln of the bottom. Now, quick little note to self before I go to the next step. If I have a base, and I've probably done this already, to a fractional exponent, remember that the denominator is the root and the numerator is the power. Okay, why am I talking about this? because I can write the square root of y as y to the one-half. Okay, so now I can do the power rule and bring that little guy out in front, bring that little guy out in front, and then we're done. Okay, there it is. Okay, so that is expanding. Okay, now we're going to do the opposite of that rewrite it as a single logarithm. So maybe I have something like um, uh, log of x minus log of y. How clever is that? Well, if I am subtracting logs, remember again, logs are exponents. So if I'm subtracting exponents, I must be dividing. That's this. So that means I'm going to write a single log with division. Whatever was in the top, or so whatever was first goes in the top, whatever was second goes in the bottom. It has to be a single logarithm. Okay, This is not the same thing as log of x over log of y. That, that's not the same thing. That means something completely different. We will talk about that in the next little chunk. Okay, That relates to this rule, which we haven't done yet. Okay. All right, let's 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 do another unexpand, another rewrite as a single log. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let's just do that one. Now, remember that rule that said you could peel off the exponent and bring it out in front? Well, I'm going to put it back. I'm going to put it back. Done. Okay, so let's put some of that together. Okay. Now, 
please note that the bases need to match to do this. Mm. Sorry, quick change. Okay, the line through it means makes it a Z. Okay. All right. Same kind of thing as you know, uh, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. You got to deal with exponent stuff first. So this has to go back. This has to go back. This has to go back. So log base two of x cubed plus log base q of y squared plus log base 2 of z to the 1 half power. Now these are all addition. Well when you're adding exponents, because logs are exponents, you must be multiplying. So I'm going to write log base 2 x cubed y squared square root of z. You tell me why is that square root? Should make sense. Okay, and that I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, this is the the first chunk of uh, properties with logarithms. Thank you very much for watching, and if you have questions, as always, we'll see you in class. Sanford out. Bye.